Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about cancelled Grand Theft Auto games. Did you know that aside from the cancellation of Grand Theft Auto 6, I'm kidding, we don't even know anything about Grand Theft Auto 6, but aside from GTA 6, there have been four Grand Theft Auto games in the past that have actually been cancelled. That's right, four games total. So in total, there's 14 Grand Theft Auto games. If these four weren't cancelled, there would actually be 18 Grand Theft Auto games, which is pretty crazy to think about. But there are four total games. We're going to go over all of those today. My goal with these videos is to hopefully educate you on just some cool stuff that you may not have known about. So at the end of the video, if you learned something new, hopefully I can earn that thumbs up from you and possibly a subscription if you are feeling nice. But with that said, let's go ahead and talk about some canceled Grand Theft Auto games. The first canceled game we have is Grand Theft Auto 64, and the title of this game is pretty self-explanatory. I think most of y'all can put two and two together. This was a canceled PlayStation 1 port of Grand Theft Auto 1 for the Nintendo 64, and this would have included enhanced graphics, new levels, and new characteristics. And I'm not too sure what new characteristics would be, but... For unknown reasons, the port was cancelled before being publicly revealed. It was actually revealed at E3 1999, where it was said to only be half complete, meaning only 50% of the game was completed. Now, no footage or images were shown at E3 1999, and there really weren't any footage or images ever seen or released for the longest time. And because of this, it was thought that the port probably never existed, and that was it. Then, Lucci from Assembler Gamers posted a scan of the Spanish Nintendo 64 magazine from July 1999, issue 19 book that featured screenshots of GTA on the Nintendo 64. And the first screenshot is just an original design document from the very early days of Grand Theft Auto 1, when it was still called Race and Chase, which we're gonna talk about later on. And the description of this game includes the platforms that the game was intended to be released on. One of those being the Ultra 64, which would later become the Nintendo 64. Now the second screenshot we have is actually a high quality scan from the Spanish Nintendo 64 magazine, of course, showing three different high quality images of what Grand Theft Auto 64 was gonna look like, followed up with a couple paragraphs describing the game and its development. Now the second game we have is quite possibly the coolest Grand Theft Auto game that never existed. And this is Grand Theft Auto Online Crime World. Hence the online name. Pay attention to that because in December 1999 on page 21 of PC Zone magazine number 83, an article documenting information about an unreleased GTA Online game was written. That's right, GTA Online in 1999. That's insane to think about. Now, I'm going to read off to you guys the excerpt from the PC Zone magazine, which is titled No Stopping GTA. And it reads, Having snapped up DMA design from publishers Info Games, Take Two have big plans for the Scottish developer, with ambitions to extend the Grand Theft Auto series with two more titles. GTA 3D, which would actually become Grand Theft Auto 3, will be the obvious next step, setting the crime up in 3D cities, with players able to walk about Quake-style and carjack various vehicles in a range of cities. Grand Theft Auto Online Crime World is a different matter, with worldwide servers letting you drive against other players in local cities. Whether this means only U.S. players will be able to drive about in U.S. cities remains to be seen, and we don't know yet whether Crime World will be 3D or 2D. At a guess, a 2D view seems more feasible at this stage. We'll keep you posted on release dates for both games. Now, there's also a very interesting description of GTA Online Crime World from a Google forum from October 26, 1999. And you can find all these sources linked in the description. But this is from Alistair Grant, and he says, I quote, As a result, the company expects the acquisition to be accretive in both fiscal years 1999 and 2000. The company plans to utilize the DMA design team as a high-end source of creatively diverse product for Sony's upcoming PlayStation 2 platform 
as well as the PC and the internet. DMA will continue to develop the Grand Theft Auto titles for publication through the company's Rockstar Games division, including GTA 3D, which like I said would become GTA 3, and Grand Theft Auto Online Crime World. Now, after this magazine article came about, the game was seemingly canceled as it went totally ghost mode, and it was never heard from before or after the release of Grand Theft Auto 3. And it's interesting to note that Grand Theft Auto 3 on the PC was at one point going to contain a multiplayer game mode, but it was canceled. And this can be found through strings of code within the game GTA 3 on the PC, which actually allow us to enable the multiplayer option in the main menu. However, it doesn't do anything, it leads to nowhere. And it makes you wonder, was Rockstar gonna feature GTA Online Crime World as a separate entity? that would have been part of GTA 3, much like GTA 4's multiplayer is to GTA 4, and GTA Online is to GTA 5. It's crazy to think that even 18 years ago now, or even 20 years ago during the development of these games, Rockstar was thinking way outside the box and this far ahead with their games. Next up, we have a not so interesting Grand Theft Auto game that was canceled, and this is Grand Theft Auto for the Sega Saturn. And what makes this not so interesting is it was just literally a port. That's all it was going to be. And we know this because Keith Hamilton, the lead programmer of Grand Theft Auto 1, mentioned at one point in the past that a port of GTA 1 was originally intended to be made for the Sega Saturn, and it would have used the engine of another Sega game known as Clockwork Night. And it would have featured a side 3D view with enhanced graphics. But apparently the port was canceled very early on in development because the team did not have the financial means to continue on creating this port. And instead, the PC version of GTA 1 became the main priority. Now, the cancellation of the Sega Saturn version of GTA 1 also seems to coincide with the disastrous release of the console in North America, which only sold like half of what was sold in Japan in its first week. And this is probably due in part to the PS1 releasing just two weeks after the Sega Saturn did in 1994. And I'm sure this had a big impact on what went on with the Sega Saturn. And, well, after the PC version of GTA 1 was such a success, the PS1, Saturn's biggest competitor, would also receive a port of the game as well, leaving the Sega Saturn in the dust. Now, there's actually three screenshots that do exist from three different magazine articles detailing Grand Theft Auto 1 for the Sega Saturn. Nothing too special, just some screenshots and some descriptions. And finally, the last Grand Theft Auto game that was canceled that we have is actually Race and Chase. And I'm not sure if we consider this like a canceled GTA game because Race and Chase eventually evolved into Grand Theft Auto 1. And for those that don't know, Race and Chase was the original concept of what would eventually become Grand Theft Auto 1. And did you know that the GTA games that we know and love today were brought about by a major glitch within this game? So the original premise of Race and Chase consisted of an open world where the player would take on the role of either a cop or a criminal through multiple game modes that ranged from police chases, hence the name of the game, Race and Chase. Now, in a 2011 interview with developers of the game, it was stated that early testers of Race and Chase hated the concept of the game, but loved a major glitch in the game that when playing as a criminal would cause the AI-controlled police officers to ram non-stop into the player-controlled vehicle, ramming it off the road, which would cause non-stop crashing. And the testers of, the, of this game, while they hated the concept of Race and Chase, found this hilarious and eventually decided to abandon the linear-style missions just to have only police chases. And this would eventually evolve and transform into the GTA that we know and love today, where we play as the bad guy, completing tasks and trying to avoid notoriety levels. So it's really cool how Race and Chase evolved into the Grand Theft Auto that we know today, all because of a glitch where the cops would nonstop ram the player and eventually the, the developers were like, you know what, screw this. Let's just be the bad guy and run from the cops. So if y'all enjoyed this video, hopefully I could earn your thumbs up and your subscription. As I always say, a little love goes a long way. Hopefully you learned something new today about the Grand Theft Auto series that you didn't already know with these canceled 
games. There hasn't been anything too spectacular like a canceled Grand Theft Auto Japan or something like that, but we do have these minor games that would have made 18 total GTA games, as I stated at the beginning of the video. But with that said, thank you all for tuning in. Take it easy, have a safe one, and I hope to see you in the next video.